Hey, Papa Pizza Eaters, welcome back to the channel. I have a treat for y'all. So this has been going crazy on uh, TikTok and I'm gonna try it, okay? Just an egg boil. I've had the boiled eggs in the seafood boil, but I've never had the egg boil. We gonna check it out and see if I like it or not. And then I just got some regular Budok ramen. Cheesy. This is the cream kind. And if you want to purchase it, my TikTok shop is linked below. I got it for a really cheap deal for like seven bucks. So that's even cheaper than the store. So yeah, let's dig on in. Wow, that's really good. They're kind of soft boiled, like they're kind of, they have like a jammy consistency. Oh gosh, I'm filming in the middle of the day and these cars, and they going crazy. Mm -mm. That is so good. Mm-hmm. So fire. We drink some water. I got my Gemini cup because it's Gemini season, baby. If y'all didn't know, I'm a Gemini. Mm -hmm. And my birthday is next week. It's next Saturday. So I think I'm gonna do one more mukbang before my birthday. I might just throw in a bonus mukbang. And that'll be my birthday mukbang. But yeah. I'm a Gemini. <clears throat> and no, I'm not two-faced. I just give the energy that I'm being given. Period. <laughs> Everybody likes to call Gemini two-faced. I'm not two-faced. If I'm shown love and support, why wouldn't I meet that back with love and support? If I'm getting a weird vibe off of another person, then I'm probably not going to want to hang around them. Like, the people I love and care about definitely know that I love and care about them. And I'm not the socially Gemini. Like, for me to be a June baby, I'm pretty introverted because I know a lot of June Geminis are, like, extremely extroverted. I'm a toss up between um, both. Like, yeah, my extroverted side. Okay, my bad about that, guys. You know how you get those notifications on your phone. I am saving up to get a new camera so that my phone doesn't have to be my main source of filming. <sighs> but where was I? I forgot, I lost my whole train of thought. Anywho, 
before I was really interrupted. Oh yeah, I think I was talking about Gemini and things like that, Zodiac type of thing, but totally lost my train of thought. So we're just gonna talk about, someone commented on my last video about doing a story time. And I was just thinking about like how scary it is to be like a teenager nowadays. Like I wouldn't want to be a teen with like the mature. I wouldn't want to grow up now, like be a teenager now because of like the social pressures. The fact that they have the mature internet with this new AI technologies. Mm -mm. Someone can track your geolocation with a picture. Like, yeah, I wouldn't want to, they, they can find your geolocation with like your picture. I'm trying to get this correct. Sorry, y'all. Unhinged and chaotic. Anyways. So anyways, this leads me to my story time. When I was 15, maybe I was, no, I was 16. I was 16, okay? I was a junior in high school. I was 16 years old, met this. older guy on on this uh, site called Black Planet, okay? If you are 2000s, 90s baby, 2000s, you know what Black Planet was. Like this was pre-MySpace for me. So B Black Planet was like our only like little getaway for real. I didn't get onto MySpace until I was like later on in that year. So I was 15. I had to have been. So it's 15. Okay, so I had a stalker at 15. And he was older. He was 19 um, years old. And he said that he was turning 17. Because in my state, you can date somebody about two years older than you, but not anything over that. So, I'm thinking he's, you know, closer to my age of 19. And then we start to talk on the phone, he reveals that he's 19 and he's in college. So I'm like, yeah, I don't think we should talk anymore. And this was like a good eight, nine months down the line. I'm like, I don't think we should talk anymore. Like you're way too old for me. And then he was like, oh, but I really like you. You're so cool. You're so mature for your age and da da da. I'm like, oh my God. So I felt like he wasn't gonna let up. So I was just like, okay, let me just continue to talk to him and never meet up with him. Just only keep it on the phone. In my mind, this is what I, you know, established for myself. Like, I'm never going to meet up with him. I'm only going to keep this on the phone and whatever, whatever. Um, so yeah, that's what I did. And one day I'm leaving school like I'm I'm exiting my school bus after because I had an after school bus because I was a cheerleader and in the fall time it gets dark mind you I live in the suburbs so it's pitch dark there's there was barely any lights on our streets so like I couldn't even see to get into like the front door so I'm wrestling for my keys and then my phone rings and I pick it up and he was like oh who told you to wear that and I'm like wear what 
I'm like, what are you talking about? What am I wearing? He was like, I told you not to wear revealing clothing. And I'm like, I'm not. I was like, what are you wearing those tight blue jeans for with the rips? And that's exactly what I was. I was like, you're not, I'm like, you can't see me right now. He was like, your hair's in a bun. You got a purple backpack and you have your cheerleading jacket on. And it had, he named out my initials of my school. I called my mom and I was like, can y'all please open up the door like right now? Like right now. Cause like I, I wasn't gonna like fucking dig for my keys. I had to get into the house like now. My brother was in the living room and he opened up the door for me. He was like, damn, what are you in a hurry for? I'm like, I'm like, I don't even want to talk about it. So that happens. Um, he was like, I'm like, how do you know where I live? He was like, my sister worked for AT&T. And I pinged. I pinged your phone from a satellite. If that could happen in 2008 or 2006, imagine what's going on now with the advancement of technology. If he could ping my phone from a satellite back then, Imagine what you can do now. That's the point of my story time, okay? I have a 13-year-old daughter. She doesn't have a phone. And when she is able to have a phone, she used to have a phone when she was 10. It was very limited. I had it linked to my account but she barely talks on the phone so i just was like i'm not going to keep paying for this if you don't have people to talk to you know and we're like not away from each other more than like an hour so it just doesn't doesn't seem like a great investment but when she is by, like by herself and out and about or with like a relative or something i will get her a phone but it's going to be a bark phone. Bark phones have no internet on them. So they can't go surfing the internet. And they also have parent parental protection. I'm not even halfway done with my damn story time. Let me go back to my story time. Sorry, y'all. You know, y'all know I'd be like all over the place sometimes. So, I blocked him on my phone after that whole "I can see you" thing. He had my number saved in his sister's phone. So he would call me from his, from his sister's phone. Why are you ignoring me? Why can't I get a hold of you? I need to see you. We need to talk. Mind you, fast forwarding a little bit. My school is way in the boonies. Where I lived was not where I went to school. So I lived in the suburbs of a major city, but my school was in the rural part of the state. It took me 45 minutes to get to and from school every day. Keep that in mind. 
yeah i was in student leadership clubs and stuff like that so i'm always after school like i always would come home well after six o'clock every day so i never was around and one day in my homeroom I look up at the school newspaper and I see this guy's name, the guy who is stalking me, wanted for grape of a university student, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. And I asked him, I was like, oh, I would love to see your a picture of you today. Can I see a picture of you? He sends me a picture. The same picture that was in the mugshot was like, was his face, matched his face. So he's wanted, he's a rapist and he has my telephone number. And he knows where I live. And mind you, I'm so scared. I have no idea what to do. My mother does not know. My family does not know what's going on. And then one day, he calls me hysterical. He calls me from his sister's phone hysterical, crying. My mom is gone, my mom is gone. He took her away from me. So the mother was going through domestic violence. And the mother's boyfriend unalived the mother. And he's calling me hysterical and crying that he lost his mother. And I'm just like, there's already a trauma bond there. There's already the manipulation in there. And like, I have no exposure to the world. I'm literally a teenager. I have no idea what to do, how to console this person who is deranged and scary and a convict, like a felon on the freaking run for a crime to another young person. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't know what to do or say. I kind of fawned in this, you know, scenario. Like, I just fawned. I just was so unnervingly distraught. And it, I was in shock because I don't know what this is going to mean for me, being that I am his intended target, okay? Um, or potential target, I should say. So I console him and I'm just like, I, I think that we should not talk anymore. Like, I just don't feel good about this. This is like, you're way too old for me. I'm, I'm way too young for you. Like, you can, you could be in trouble. You can go to jail. Oh, so you've been talking to the police? So you, you, you plan on snitching on me or something? I'm about to ride past your house right now. And I'm just like... I'm like, don't do that. Like, don't come over here. Like, don't come over here. My uncles are all here. I'm like bull crapping at this point. At this point, I'm like, my uncles are all here. My cousins here. My brothers here. And if you come over here, they're gonna kick your ass. He was like, I don't care. I can ride past. I got cousins too. And I'm just like, do not come over here. Like, stop. Like, just don't. Like, just stay over there. Like, I'm sorry to hear about your mom. But just please, you have to be with your family right now. Like you need to be with your sister. And he was like, you right, you right. And like, oh, sorry, that was my remote <laughs> to my camera. So like, I prayed hard that night. Like I was like, God, please just keep this guy away from me. Keep this guy away from me. So they had the funeral for his mom. And shortly after that, he gets locked up. And I had never heard from him again. At, by that time, I'm like done with the school year, 
because like that was around that was like past spring so like summer was next um but this had been going on for almost a year we were talking for a like like no it was way past a year so this was like a year and three months this was a like that was a lot like a lot and I never heard from him again. I have never heard anything about him ever since. And that was the scariest time for me as a teenager. So I'm here to like be a testimony for people with kids, especially teenagers. Like monitor your kids. Like don't just leave them with a loaded gun being a phone with no training because had I known some safety training with my phone I wouldn't have never gave a freaking stranger my number because you just don't know who that person's gonna turn out to be it could be not a person your kid's age there's no way of knowing that and I want to like tell my younger version of myself like how smart she is because that was really scary and that could have been not a good ending you know but I'm telling this story not to like fear monger anyone but to just like be be cautious And I'm glad that I came out of that situation victorious, you know? <sighs> yes, ma'am. That was delicious. So, and if anyone knows or if you're experiencing domestic violence for yourself i will keep the hotline linked in this description of this video and share it with anyone that needs it Whew. this was a delicious meal this was so good like i still have extra sauce and i have plenty of eggs i will be eating this just like this from now on because that was absolutely delicious if you have not tried it, try it. Um, but this is the mukbang. Until next time, my purple pizza eaters. Peace. We're almost at a thousand. Let's go. Yes. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And hit the notification bell so you know when I post. And until next time, my purple pizza eaters. Peace.